Okay, so the last thing I'm going to do as we as I prepare for recording, the recording session where, you know, drums, bass, guitars, and vocals, everything with the musicians, I'm going to go through um, and turn off some stuff in the programming especially and, and sort of organize that and get me towards my, my goals um, as a starting place. Uh, some, some stuff I'm going to edit. Some stuff I'll turn off because I know I don't want to use it um, after having all the elements come together and, and doing a little bit of evaluation. Some things I may turn off and just defer the decision of like how I might want to use it till later. And, and as I go through and, um, and do stuff, I'll, I'll pause and sort of talk to you about what I'm thinking and why I'm doing stuff uh, and explain a little bit. So I'm just going to kind of uh, get into it here. Okay, I'd already turned off uh, the, the snare samples, the electronic snare and the, and the other snare sample for the first verse. Um, and now I'm realizing, I'm not exactly sure where we're going to land in terms of a recorded drum pattern with the drummer, but I, f but I definitely hear these uh, the kick one and two samples because they have, um, they sound more like a drum kit. Uh, and there's more transient information with them. I hear them flamming with the drum kit. Um, so I want to get rid of it for that reason. I want to reduce the, the size of the uh, and force impact of the drum, the, the drums in this first verse. And this, this, um, this kick three, it's a bit, it's a bit softer sounding and, and, and listening to it with the drum kit. Kind of makes a nice addition to the sound. They're still flaming a little bit, and I'm going to have to. It's uh, obviously at some point before we finish this, the this the production on the song. I'm going to have to decide what has to be moved to agree with what. Will I will I adjust what the drummer's doing to fit more with what the where the samples are landing, or the other way around? Um, that's going to become an aesthetic choice based on how I want the 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 vibe and the feel to kind of come across. Um, that will be dictated by over time through the production um, with with how, you know, sort of how rock and how performed we want certain sections to be. I probably would um, probably would tighten up the um, the play drums a little bit more to, to in the verse to these samples. So that I had more of that um, uh, contemporary feel where things are a little bit more on the grid. Things feel a little bit more looped. Uh, and it feels a little bit more sampled, but then when we get to the chorus, we're where we're gonna let the the real rock vibe of this song. Uh, that's where we're really gonna showcase it the most. Um, I might leave the drums just to play it a little bit more naturally and move some of these samples to the drums. Um, there's just things to think about, things things that I'm I'm mulling over in my mind already, but I'm I'm not ready to commit to it because I haven't engaged the artist and I don't know what some of the performances will will become and just sort of working on the basic ideas. Okay, in the first verse, I also think we've got this this chill keys track that I muted. Um, the echo vibes, it's basically doing the same part, but it's 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 more atmospheric. It's a little more back. It's more in in the background. Um, so I'm getting rid of the more forward uh, chill keys that has been in the introduction.
just it just helps and that's the reason that where I, why I have um, have Spencer give me different flavors of some of the same parts so that um, when, once we get a feel established that we can um, but we can but based on having different sounds available uh, we can kind of change it up and 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 so it stays kind of consistent and familiar but we're sort of we're changing the look of it a little bit, you know, it's, um, it's, you know, just like, it's like wearing a different pair of shoes with your favorite jeans, you know? So I'm just going to listen from there. I think I'm going to just totally wait until the chorus hits before I bring those chill keys back. Okay, there's these, these. I want to listen to what these hits are doing. There's kind of an echoey thing that's happening on uh, on the snares, and I want to, at least in the first chorus, I want to make them happen half as much. That will also give me the opportunity later in the song when it starts to happen more often in the repetition of it, that um, that's going to give me a feeling of raising... Um, raising the excitement uh, and building the momentum of the song later. So I just have to find um, that little echoey thing. Here it is. It's called Echo Hit. I don't think that's the one I'm hearing. Actually, it is this echo hit. What I'm noticing is that when it's this the the first and third time it happens. I like the sound of it in in when the guitars and the vocal are are doing something together. Um, but when I hear it in this uh, space where the vocal goes away, it feels like it's a little. It feels like it's filling in a space. I want to. I want to let the song breathe right now. So I'm just going to mute those out. And so we're just going to have that happen a couple times. In the later chorus, um, like I discussed, the idea of having it in there more often. I'm going to leave it that way for now, uh, and see how that how that ends up feeling. Oh, another thing that we should that we're going to have to talk about and and deal with. Uh, and, and sort of rectify a little bit is I have a bass keyboard playing part of what the real bass is doing. Now this happens. This happens. Uh, because the low, because you can hear so much, um, especially in low frequencies, you can hear some so much uh, things that like the intonation, like the tuning of things, uh, and you can hear them. It's a little you're it's a little more sensitive in the low frequencies. Um, if things are not lining up, um, you can hear that they're a little bit discordant and and a little bit pitchy with each other. Um, now. There's a couple ways to address that. There, you, I could, um, if I want to use the synth bass, as as just the very bottom, you know, because in uh, in in contemporary music, there's there's eight oh eights that are used for bass. There's like a lot of big sustaining uh, 
low frequency stuff that uh, that feels that's kind of done with keyboards and drums, um, uh, even just a synth bass that feels kind of modern and contemporary. But this is a rock song, so it makes sense that we would also want to have a bass in it. What I might do is I might. It depends. It, it depends on what comes next uh, in terms of what the bass player can do. Maybe um, maybe they can't live together. Um, but what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to filter a lot of the high end off of the synth bass. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna let it live down in those like sort of subby, really low frequencies and just um, on on small speakers and headphones it, it'd be kind of a feeling but like on bigger systems it's gonna be like in a club or just you know on a, a louder um, playback it's, you, it, it's you're gonna feel it a little bit more it's gonna it's gonna have that size um, and then in terms of the bass the bass part need might need to change a little bit to fit to what the keyboard bass is doing or vice versa. I might have to do the, the keyboard bass over based on what the bass part becomes. But to make them live together a little bit um, better, I'm, I'm getting rid of the low frequencies. I mean, excuse me, I got rid of the high frequencies on the synth bass. And now I'm going to dump off some of those low frequencies that are in the bass instrument itself. So they're not so much on top of each other that they hopefully they can work a little bit better in harmony. So that cleans it up a little bit and it helps. Um, also, could it also could be that um, we could open that synth bass back up a little bit, um, and the the um, the bass part could actually be something that's played higher um, over top of it, or you know that maybe they played um, uh, different different notes to where they kind of make a little bit of a chord at times. Uh, so that there's actually an interval as opposed to like a double. There's different ways to handle it. I think for now. Um, because I, I like the idea of having the, um, the, the synth bass in there and kind of creating a little bit of that, that texture, um, that we were talking about. That's what, that's how I'm going to, that's how I'm going to keep it in, um, the intro and the choruses. Uh, you know, I don't know if it's going to, I don't know if it's going to survive in the verses or not. Um, it's, but the second verse is not in the first verse, but so that's a way to kind of have those things live together. And this is all, this is all like, this is recording a record is a journey. And this, I'm, I'm giving myself a really good place, uh, to start creating the tools that when, when, you know, Graham shows up and we start recording, I'd say, Hey man, this is what I, what I did. These are some of the ideas I have in mind and I can demonstrate it. Um, and then we, we can record to it and, and we can, and sort of work through and figure out what needs to be important, what needs to change, um, and what, what we're using to, to kind of give this song um, uh, a, a little bit of new d dimension, so I'm just gonna just gonna keep listening. Another thing about having the original stems for a recording like this is that you can do things like create vocal effects. So what's going to be kind of neat about that is that um, the original vocal, I could use the original vocal as a double vocal. Um, I don't have to use it at all. We, maybe, it, maybe, it become, maybe it stays the lead vocal. But by creating these effects off it, when Graham sings the song again, that's going to be in. That's going to that's going to happen for him in that tag while he's he's singing that. That's gonna that's gonna kind of feel cool. Um, I, I feel like that this first one is a little bit loud um, in comparison to the second one, and I kind of just want to turn it down so that I can balance it in a place that's going to be better um, for just sort of a static balance across across the board. Um, carrying on. Right, 
that snap could be cool, but I still I feel like that these snares these snare samples again in the verse maybe are not the right call right now. The snaps feel like a, a little bit much right in, right away in the verse, but I'm gonna edit them out for the first half and see what it feels like to have them come in the second half. In an arrangement, I'm always looking for I'm looking for development. I'm looking for uh, you got to have dynamic. You got the chorus comes up, and then you've got that the tag sort of bit. And we've got the verse. I want the verse to come back down, but I want it to come down in a different way uh, than the first verse, and have it feel a little bit have a little bit more expanded, a little bit more developed. So that that first whip sound, which I th which sounds to me like more like a clap. Let's listen to it. Well, it's like a reverse clap. Um, the first one I felt like it 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 it, um, it comes in before I was bringing in the snaps. So that f that feels like uh, that's not how I want to lead into that. So I muted the first one. I'm gonna keep the second one going into the pre-chorus because and now that's gonna be only time in the song where that sound ha happens. And that's kind of cool. I, I enjoy where like you just have this one moment where you get this sound in a song, a special moment, like um, off a lyric or, or whatever. It's just, just taking those opportunities and having this, having all this stuff to play with sort of beforehand allows me an opportunity to sort of do some of that stuff. And now I'm also, I, I like the, this, what's called the verse loop. It's this, this, um, it's almost sounds like a hand drum. And you can hear that it's kind of got some distorted delay on it. Um, I like having that in there. Just, it's a, it's a little bit loud. I kind of want it to be more subtle. And in the background, cause kind of adding like this, a cool dimension, adding a rhythm, but without it being, uh, being too forceful. Um, Just seeing what this sweep is about. Turn this one down. Seem, seems fine for now. I'm, I'm not sure. Might mute it later. That's just kind of one of those decisions uh, I'm going to leave in, but to kind of in my mind, it's like, eh, I'm not sure if I want that there, but for now, it's fine. And now because the track's fuller and, and the size of things have come up, I'm not, the, the kick drum uh, sample issue I was having earlier uh, doesn't feel as pronounced, but because we've been saving um, saving the kick drums for the choruses, I, I might see about pulling kick drum one out until the pre-chorus. That's cool. I'm noticing that in chorus two, we don't have the first kick. I don't know if that if that's why that is. If that's just sort of that was a a mistake. Um, how that in, how that happened, but I'm going to I'm going to add it into chorus two because I want them to be the same. Not sure what happened there, uh, why that kick drum is, that is in the first chorus is not in the second chorus, but you know, this is why we, we always check our work and, and, um, and make sure uh, that if something is like that, that it's, it's purposeful and desired. Um, let's see here. Like I said, I turned the uh, uh, earlier about the acoustic slide because it was I wasn't sure because it doesn't line up perfectly with what it's doubling. 
um, but it also is not meant to be super loud. So I, I've turned it down and listening to the section, it's it, it's adding some cool atmosphere and I'm not, I'm not bothered by any uh, timing discrepancies. So let's just listen to it again. So I don't hear the timing discrepancies. Um, it's not super audible. Like I, I can't necessarily specifically pick out the slide, um, the acoustic slide. But when I turn it off, when I've been turning it off, the the dimension and vibe kind of goes away from the leading part. So um, it does make a difference, even though we're not hearing a lot of it. It's almost like um, it's almost where you might balance like a, an echo or a reverb in things. It's it's um, it's it's part of the background and part of the texture and depth that I'm creating in the track. Okay, so I'm just going to finish up here. Um, I noticed I have my vocal chop muted. Just want to check that out. I don't need that vocal chop there in the middle. I think it's I think it's really cool coming into the verse. It, it it's this very uh, forward sound that um, it, it sounds contemporary to me. That that type of uh, of a sound I hear I hear sounds like that in in electronic music and pop music. But I don't need to hear it again in the verse because it's set the mood and we've got this little echo vibe thing happening. It's it's here um, at the chorus, so let's see. I don't really like the color and, and it, it doesn't sound wrong to me, but it, it's at the top of the chorus, it, it doesn't, it, it doesn't really feel like the right thing to me. So it's not that, that it's wrong. It's just, it's like, I'm not really sure that I, I want that there at the top of the course. So I'm gonna, I've muted it and listen to the top of the course one more time. I like the feeling of those chill keys coming back and we've got this, this Kung Fu thing, which I think is a, which is a big organ hit. Um, it's some sort of keyboard hit that's been that's been put something through, through something like Valhalla's um, uh, Shimmer, you know, something that's got some sort of like uh, pitched octave echoes, and that just sort of like generate on and, and, and sort of give you this cool texture and tail. Um, I, and I like the I like the feeling of that and the chill keys coming back. I, I don't want the vocal chop there, so I'm just going to kind of I'm just going to sort of follow down the path now of what this vocal chop is doing and see where I want to use it. I I want to. It's a very very cool sound, but I don't want to overuse it. I want it to really feel special when uh, when it's happening in the arrangement. <laughs> It's cool there going into the tag, but I don't feel like I need it at the top of this verse. Because there's this other sound that comes in that's called POC. So it's a very similar, like a like uh, where it comes in the arrangement in terms of like the transition into the verse. It's uh, I have a very similar sort of like big kind of cool sound that's happening, but it's not the same sound um, that happened to, at the top of the of the first verse. So it keeps the feel there, but it's giving me a different dimension um, of. Uh, of uh, of sound, and I think that it keep, kind of keeps things interesting, keeps things familiar, keeps things impactful, um, but it's a different sound. Um, so just now, do we want this vocal chop in the middle of the verse? No. 
Not sure. I'm going to get rid of this, whatever that snap clap thing was. Is it this? Okay. Snare roll. I'm going to boot that out of there. And uh, honestly, you know, um, when I'm when I'm working with somebody to to do the programming with me, I purposely don't. I ask for a lot of stuff, and I don't over edit what they're um, what they're giving me. Um, I you know give them a lot of direction, but at the same time, I kind of do it on the front end. And I kind of let them just run with it and give me a bunch of stuff because I feel like. Um, that in in the case of some of this stuff, maybe it's a little bit overused, but in that one spot that I want to use it, um, uh, it's really cool. So if I if I were to say like, oh man, I don't like that, I don't like that snare roll thing you did in the middle of verse two. Well, who knows? They they might be inclined to to change it or take it out of the song all all together, and I don't know that I wanted to do that. So, um, you know, that's part of production is trying to encourage people um, and give them a direction. But not over edit them and not over manage them because then if you do that you, you kind of take away their personality as a as a, a creative and a musician and uh, and then so then you've kind of nullified their um, their unique uh, voice and involvement in in the project. I mean I might as well do it all myself um, if I'm going to sort of take that approach um, and um, I. I, I I don't think that's as valuable. I mean, I certainly have some strong skill sets, but um, and and I'm complete, but but uh, in many ways, but um, but that doesn't mean that my complete set of tools is always the best tool. There's there's always somebody that can do something a little bit better, and so that's part of um, knowing yourself um, and knowing what you need and and who can help you and how they can help you. I mean, I'm in charge. I'm making the final decisions. I. I uh, I'm producing the track, but I'm I'm inviting other creative input, and in and so you have to. That's one of those people skills that you have to to look to work on and and understand how to um, coach someone, direct someone, but then also not overdo it so that they can really be themselves and give you something that you didn't even know you you wanted. We can hear that the organ plays a the the organ that's now in plays a similar sort of like hit there where that vocal chop is. So there again, I don't need it. This is great. I'm just kind of I'm getting it down to the most essential places that it's gonna that it's happening. And so far, I've got it twice in the song, but it's it's making a big impact. I love it at the top of the outro, and it's going to happen here in the middle. It's great. I love it. I love you know. I love uh, it's that's also a very modern, contemporary way of arranging. Is is you know you've got these elements that are happening throughout the 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 progression and journey of the song, and they're sort of building up, and then um, and it's kind of it's pretty common, um, but I, I really enjoy it. It's just it's like where everything kind of comes together, and it's this stew of of really interesting um, stuff playing off each off of each other, and it's all familiar because you've heard it through the song, but more in like specialized places. But then suddenly, at the end of the song, you get an opportunity to kind of hear it working all in harmony, and it um, you, you've given the listener an opportunity to latch on and identify each little hook and make it special and make it significant along the way, and then in the end, you're combining them all, and and it's just like it. Uh, it's familiar because of all of the all the experience they've had listening to that before. But then you kind of combine it all, and then it becomes this um, um, something even new and special and elevated. I, I feel like I'm done. So what's going to happen next is well, I, I'm gonna. I'm going to temporarily mute this electric piano in verse 2 because I'd like to try to do something else. So now what's going to happen is we're going to, ahead of the musicians showing up, um, 
Danny and myself, Danny's my assistant, we're going to uh, add all of the the recording tracks that we're that we're going to want to put in the song. I'm going to put in a new bass track, um, a, drum tracks, the, the drum tracks we're going to need for uh, for, uh, for that, um, some electric guitar tracks. Probably just start out adding four or five, you know, just because of all the stuff that we m might potentially be replacing. I'm not saying that we're going to replace everything that was in the demo. We, we, we very well may use some of the demo stems. Um, and so, you know, make the vocal tracks, just kind of get the session prepared, make sure that um, we can hear everything in the headphones um, and set up some microphones ahead of uh, everybody coming into the session uh, and line check things and just make make sure that we're ready. Uh, to me, it's a, you know, I've said this before, it's very important to be prepared. I'm, I am, you know, I've, I've spent a little bit of time thinking about the song and or where I want to take it. And so that's the sort of the, the dreaming creative part of my brain. Then I've sat down here and I've, I've done sort of more of the technical work to get me there. Um, and so we're now we're going to set up the technical end of things so that when everybody shows up and we're in the moment recording that I can be focused on the musical decision making and not worrying about, um, oh, wait, we need to uh, we need a guitar track and we need a guitar mic set up. It's it's already there. It's just like when it's when that moment comes to do that, there's been a little bit of uh, preparation. Now, I know that um, I have a complete uh, big studio full of gear and um, not everybody has the ability to set up a bunch of stuff at one time. Um, but but being as prepared as you can uh, be is is really essential. So now it's time to move on to that phase of pre finishing our preparation for the recording.